In the sequel to Say Cheese and Die, we return to the world of Greg Banks and his evil camera. I didn't really care for the first one as I felt it had a pretty weak ending, explaining away the camera by saying it was cursed by a magician skilled in the dark arts. There's no sorcery this time around, however, and the ending was actually pretty funny, in a good way. It opens with Greg regaling his class with the story of the camera he found and all of the horrible events that surrounded it. This does not please his teacher, Mr. Sauer, spelt S-A-U-R, as he wants a true story, not something obviously made up. So he gives Greg a failing grade for the report, which would doom Greg's chances of getting a good grade in the class, and thereby going to see his cousins in California. So he begs Mr. Sauer to give him another chance. So the teacher says if Greg can bring him proof, he'll pass him. I felt this was a pretty good setup for the sequel. Hell, I've seen worse. Looking at you, Monster Blood. So Greg retrieves the camera, which freaks out his friend Sherry, who had disappeared after her photo was taken by the camera in the first book. She and Greg play some tug of war over the camera, during which a photo is accidentally taken of Sherry. Accidentally? How do you accidentally take a picture of someone? And this is a recurring thing throughout both books. Just keep your finger away from the damn shutter button. Anyway, Sherry's picture comes out normal but negative. Angry, she takes Greg's picture, which shows him ballooned up to 400 pounds. Over the next few days, Greg gets fatter while Sherry gets thinner. At one point, Greg shows up to class super overweight. His classmates can tell something is obviously wrong with him, but his teacher, the aforementioned Mr. Sauer, decides to make fun of him out loud in front of everybody. Like this, for example, on page 88. Mr. Sauer says, Greg, I want you to go see the nurse. I want her to discuss the four food groups with you. I think you've been eating too much of all four. <laughs> like, Jesus. How does this guy still have a job? So Greg and Sherry struggle to come up with solutions to their problem, at one point pondering whether they should rip up the pictures. They decide against it because they're too afraid they'll be ripped to shreds as well. The fuck? Wasn't it Greg who did just that very thing to Sherry's picture in the original after she vanished? And not two hours later she came back? Dumbass kids. So Greg takes his pictures to his photographer brother Terry and asks if he can reverse the pictures, turning the negative into a positive and the positive into a negative. Is that even possible? Remember, this book was written in the 90s, before the widespread use of desktop image editing. So Terry would have had to have done this manually. Anyway, it works and the kids are back to normal. But Craig wants his revenge on the evil Mr. Sauer and uses the camera one last time. But when he goes to take Mr. Sauer's picture in class, the teacher instead wants to take a class photo with it. Womp womp. As far as sequels go, this one was pretty good. Ghost Camp. Uh-oh, another camping story. Will this book fall in the same trap as Horror at Camp Jelly Jam did, following the plot points of the superior Welcome to Camp Nightmare? Thankfully, it's a large no, but also a small yes, as the kids, while well, the main characters, are still not allowed to leave. But hey, no one disappears, at least anyone living that is, because as the title implies, everyone's a ghost at Ghost Camp, or Camp Spirit Moon. They're also fucked up. They shout, YO SPIRITS, at each other in salute play weird jokes, and seem to love self-mutilation. Every time Harry and Alex turn around, someone's sticking a tent pole through their foot or jabbing a fork into their neck. Oh, quick aside about the names in this book. I mentioned Harry, one of the main characters already, but there's also a character named Marv. How fucking cool is that? Harry and Marv in the same book. Maybe after their time in ghost camp is over, they went on to terrorize a poor little fuck named Kevin. Which could be possible as the ghosts here need to possess the minds of the living in order to escape the camp. This one was alright, but nothing too remarkable. How to kill a monster. And how about this, another swamp story. Gosh, when I read that step-siblings Gretchen, which really is someone named Gretchen in the 90s, and Clark were being taken to stay with Gretchen's grandparents who live in a swamp, I had flashbacks of You Can't Scare Me. Please, I said, let something fucking happen. And happen it did. We didn't have to wait until page 110 for the monster to reveal itself. Thankfully, it came in halfway through. Apparently, it was being kept locked away in a room on the second floor of the mansion Gretchen's grandparents supposedly live in. And when Gretchen and Clark discover the monster, the grandparents just dip out and lock the kids in. What the hell's going on? Well, they left the kids letters explaining the deal. Get this. They say they've gone to find help in dealing with the monster, and that they regret they had to lock them in. It was for their protection, you see? They wouldn't be safe out in the swamp, so they've doomed them with a real monster inside the house. What kind of fucked up logic is this? Again, I ask, how are people in positions of authority in these books this fucking stupid? 
Why are they legal guardians of other human beings? And to top it off, they say if the monster has escaped, that the kids would have no choice but to kill it. Wow, <laughs> way to be responsible. Well, the kids succeed, but by happenstance. Turns out the monster is allergic to humans. Yep, in plain English, the monster, after it's grabbed Gretchen, inquires, Are you human? To which she responds yes, to which the monster says he's allergic, falls over, and dies. The end. <laughs> this was a jaw-to-the-floor kind of book, but not for the reasons a series called Goosebumps might infer. But still, at least something happened in this one, which is why I enjoyed it probably more than I should have.